Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 3, Strategic Human Resource Management and the HR Scorecard. Section 1, Big Ideas. As it faced increasing pressure from other traditional grocers and online firms, retail grocery giant Albertsons had to improve performance and boost profitability fast. The firm's basic strategy for accomplishing this required aggressively controlling costs, taking a customer-focused approach to growth, and energizing employees. And, as in many firms today, Albertson's top management relied on their human resource managers to help the company achieve these strategic goals. But how could Albertson's human resources team help the company control costs and hire customer-focused employees, and then energize them? Well, They could introduce new screening, training, pay, and other human resource policies and practices that would support top management's strategic goals. Good human resource managers must figure out how to shape their department's policies and practices so they align with the company's strategic aims. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first try to understand strategy and the strategic management process. Albertson's strategic plan included actions to reduce costs become more customer-focused, and thus increase profitability. So, a strategic plan is the company's plan for how it will match its internal strengths and weaknesses with external opportunities and threats in order to maintain a competitive advantage. In other words, managers must ask, where are we now as a business? Where do we want to be, and how should we get there? Then, they develop specific strategies, human resource and others, to take the company from where it is now to where they want to be. A strategy is a course of action, or a plan. Now, let's look a little more closely at the strategic management process. Strategic planning is part of the strategic management process. Strategic management includes both strategic planning and implementation. It's the process of identifying and executing the organization's strategic plan, by matching the company's capabilities with the demands of its environment. Yet, in the end, strategic planning is remarkably simple. Decide what business you're in now and which ones you want to be in, formulate a strategy for getting there, and then execute your plan. Strategic management is a six-step process. In the first step, managers must define their business. In fact, The most basic strategic decisions managers make are about deciding what business their firms should be in, the products or services they sell, the geographic markets in which they sell them, and how they'll distinguish their products or services from competitors. Managers then choose strategies, such as buying competitors or expanding overseas, to get the company from where it is today to where it wants to be tomorrow. In Step 2, Managers methodically analyze their external and internal situations. The strategic plan should provide a direction for the firm that makes sense in terms of the external opportunities and threats the firm faces and the internal strengths and weaknesses it possesses. To assist with strategic external-internal audit, many managers use SWOT analysis to identify company strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This analysis helps them strategically align their firm's internal and external environments. Step 3 of the strategic management process translates the company's mission into specific strategic goals. For example, Citicorp pursues a successful mission of providing integrated, comprehensive financial services worldwide. But what exactly does this mission mean for each Citicorp department? To guide managerial actions, Citicorp needs goals in areas like building shareholder value, maintaining superior rates of return, and balancing the business by customer, product, and geography. These specific goals give managers something to aim for. And once these goals have been developed, managers formulate strategies to achieve them. This happens in Step 4 of the strategic management process. The strategy, or plan, shows how the organization will move from the business it's in now to the business it wants to be in, as laid out by its mission and strategic goals, given the firm's opportunities, threats, strengths, and weaknesses. In other words, the strategies bridge where the company is now with where it wants to be tomorrow. So, 
Strategies are the action plans that detail how the business will go about trying to accomplish its strategic objectives. In step five of the process, managers implement the strategy. That means translating the strategy into actions and results. For example, managers begin actually hiring or firing people, building or closing plants, and adding or eliminating product lines. Unfortunately, strategies don't always succeed. So, in the final step of the strategy management process, managers must evaluate the performance of the strategy and make necessary adjustments. Competitors introduce new products. Technological advances make production processes obsolete, and social trends reduce demand for some products or services. Strategic control keeps the company's strategy up to date. It's the process of assessing progress towards strategic goals and taking corrective action as needed. Specifically, strategic control addresses several important questions: Are we achieving our strategic goals? What is the reason for any discrepancies? And do changes in our situation suggest that we should revise our strategic plan? So, managing strategy is an ongoing process. And finally, what's the role of human resource strategies in this process? The basic process of aligning human resources strategies and actions with business strategy means formulating the business strategy, identifying the employee behaviors needed to achieve its strategic goals. Formulating human resource strategic policies and actions to produce these employee behaviors, and then developing measures to evaluate the human resource department's performance. For Albertsons, reducing related costs and improving performance meant hiring employees who had a customer-focused approach, reducing turnover, and eliminating time-consuming manual processes for store managers. So. The company's human resource managers were partners in helping the firm achieve these strategic goals. But just how involved should human resource managers be in the strategic management process? Let's answer this question by looking at an example. One of FedEx's strategic goals is to achieve a high level of customer service. Its human resource strategies, aimed at improving communication and employee development, help it differentiate itself from competitors by offering superior customer service. So there's a definite interplay between its human resource strategy and the company's strategic plans and results. In fact, we might say that human resource managers' inputs into strategic planning are crucial. That's the end of this section. Section two: Practice questions. Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question one. A SWOT analysis identifies a company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and a threats, or b technologies. The answer is a threats. A company's strategic plan should provide a direction for the firm that aligns its internal strengths and weaknesses with its external opportunities and threats. Question two: The three types of strategies are corporate level. Business level, and A departmental level, or B functional level. The answer is B. Functional strategies identify the basic courses of action that each function, such as manufacturing and human resource management, will pursue in order to help the business attain its competitive goals. Question three. Generic corporate level strategies include diversification, consolidation, and A differentiation, or B vertical integration. The answer is B. A vertical integration strategy means the firm expands by producing its own raw material or selling its products directly to consumers. Question four. The three generic business level competitive strategies are cost leadership, differentiation, and a geographic expansion, or b focus. The answer is b focus. 
Focusers carve out a market niche and compete by providing a product or service that customers can get in no other way. Okay, let's try a few true-false questions. Question 5. Visions are usually longer term and broader than mission statements. True or false? The answer is true. Whereas visions usually lay out in very broad terms what the business should be, the mission lays out in broad terms what the main tasks are now. For example, in the movie Saving Private Ryan, the team's mission was to save Private Ryan because it was short-term and focused. On the other hand, the vision of most World War II soldiers was to win the war and re-establish world peace. Question 6. Managers must make sure the firm's functional strategies align with and support their corporate and competitive strategies. True or false? The answer is true. It is this fit that breathes life into the firm's strategy. For example, Southwest Airlines pursues a low-cost leader strategy and then tailors its activities to deliver low-cost, convenient service on short-haul routes. Question 7. Human resource management supports strategy formulation by providing input on the company's internal human strengths and weaknesses, but provides little information to help analyze the company's external opportunities and threats. True or false? The answer is false. Actually, the human resource manager is in a unique position to supply external competitive intelligence, including pending labor legislation and competitors' incentive plans that may be useful in the strategic planning process. Question 8. Human resource managers are active in designing, but not executing, the company's strategic plan. True or false? The answer is false. It used to be just the company's operating managers who had heavy input into the company's strategic plan and execution. But today, top management needs the help of the human resource team to gain competitive advantage through people. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What are the three basic strategic challenges facing human resource managers? The three basic strategic challenges facing human resource managers are the need to support corporate productivity and performance improvement efforts, the fact that employees play an expanded role in employers' performance improvement efforts, and the fact that their human resource units must be more involved in designing, not just executing, the company's strategic plan. Last one, question 10. What are the six steps of the strategic management process? The six steps of the strategic management process are to define the company's business, perform external and internal audits, translate the mission into strategic goals, formulate strategies to achieve the strategic goals, implement the strategies, and evaluate performance. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is strategic management? Strategic management is the process of identifying and executing the organization's mission by matching its capabilities with the demands of its environment. Question 2. What is a vision? A vision is a general statement of its intended direction that evokes emotional feelings in organization members. Question 3. What is a SWOT analysis? A SWOT analysis is the use of a SWOT chart to compile and organize the process of identifying company strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Question 4. Define strategic control. 
Strategic control is the process of assessing progress towards strategic goals and taking corrective action as needed. Question 5. What is competitive advantage? Competitive advantage is any factor that allows an organization to differentiate its product or service from those of its competitors to increase market share. Question 6. Define leveraging. Leveraging is the act of supplementing what you have and doing more with it. For example, there are times when, to pursue opportunities, managers must underplay the firm's weaknesses and instead capitalize on some unique core company strength. Question 7. What is value chain analysis? Value chain analysis is the process of identifying the primary activities that create value for customers and the related support activities. Question 8. Define metrics. Metrics are statistics used to measure activities and their results. Question 9. What is strategic human resource management? Strategic human resource management identifies and executes human resource systems that produce the employee competencies and behaviors to achieve strategic objectives. Last one, question 10. What is a diversification strategy? A diversification strategy is a corporate strategy in which the firm will expand by adding new product lines. That's the end of this section. Section 4, Rapid Review. Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question 1. What is a strategic plan? A strategic plan is a company's plan for how it will match its internal strengths and weaknesses with external opportunities and threats in order to maintain a competitive advantage. Question 2. What is a mission? A mission is a statement that spells out who the company is, what it does, and where it's headed. Question 3. Define strategy. Strategy is the company's long-term plan for how it will balance its internal strengths and weaknesses with its external opportunities and threats to maintain a competitive advantage. Question 4. What is the purpose of the HR scorecard? The purpose of the HR scorecard is to measure the human resource function's effectiveness and efficiency in producing employee behaviors needed to achieve the company's strategic goals. Question 5. What is a business level or competitive strategy? A business level or competitive strategy is a strategy that identifies how to build and strengthen the business's long-term competitive position in the marketplace. Question 6. What is the goal of the differentiation strategy? The goal of the differentiation strategy is to be unique in the industry along dimensions that are widely valued by buyers. Question 7. What is the strategy execution role of a human resource manager? The strategy execution role of a human resource manager is to design and administer all human resource strategies, policies, and practices that support the company's corporate and competitive strategies. Question 8. What are the three components of the human resource system? The three components of the human resource system are the human resource professionals, the human resource policies and practices, and the employee behaviors and competencies. Question 9. What are some of the characteristics of high-performance work organizations? Some of the characteristics of high-performance work organizations are multi-skilled work teams, empowered frontline workers, extensive training, 
labor management cooperation, commitment to quality, and customer satisfaction. Last one, question 10. What is the purpose of strategic goals? Strategic goals are necessary to translate the mission into specific performance objectives to guide managerial actions. That's the end of this section.